Okay. Okay, Steve. During the Second World War, German military communications were protected by code thought to be unbreakable. The cipher was so complex that cracking it would take more combinations than there are electrons in the universe. Here's the story of how Hitler's code was broken in no small part due to fallibility of human nature. Each new code is designed by a person, and we all are driven by hubris, habits, laziness, prone to shortcuts, strong belief in ourselves. But of course, we all make mistakes. That's what makes us human, and this is what played a big part in breaking the unbreakable code. Enigma was a coding machine used by German military during World War II with devastating effect during the Battle of Atlantic in 1939-45. The transcontinental convoys to deliver the manpower and supplies to England were under constant attack from German Navy and their U-boats. The Enigma machine was envisioned by an American engineer, Edward Hebron, in 1918, using wire rotors for encryption. The same year, German Arthur Schiebius patented a similar design for business use. But in 1926, the German Navy secretly put it to a military use. Well, it's hard to keep a secret. In 1931, German Hans Tylo Schmidt sold more than 300 documents to the French spy master Gustave Bertrand, including the instructions and setting for the Enigma machine. However, neither the French nor the Brits were interested in the new machine. Hard to blame them. It was barely a decade since the war to end all wars. They did not completely abandon it, instead offered due to the newly created Polish Cipher Bureau, where it was accepted with gratitude. Poland's geographical location between Germany and Russia and the thousand-year history of conflict had taught them the lasting peace is elusive. The work on Enigma started immediately. The Enigma machine looks like a souped-up typewriter, has three wheels rotors, each set up with 26 letters of alphabet, each letter ready to be electrically transmitted to the second and third a wheel, then scrambled back and returned to the first. With each step, the number of combinations grows exponentially. Choosing three wheels out of five, random rotor setting, 26 randomized letters, and scrambling by 10, ca 10 cables on the plugboard. Multiplying all those combinations by each other gives the total number of possible combinations at staggering 107 sextillion. Now go ahead and try to break it. Try they did and succeeded. The task fell to three young mathematicians, Marian Rejewski, Henry Zegalski, and Jerzy Ruzicki. With the Schmidt's documents and an unbelievably hard work, they were able to deduct how the German text was produced, enabling them to read German messages. Rejewski's first major breakthrough was the discovery that the letter on each wheel were in alphabetical order. Well, we do like order and pattern. He also discovered that the three-letter setting of the first messages was encrypted twice. That means that three out of six letters were the same, making an easier task for the cryptographers. In 1938, a quirk in rotor setting was discovered, allowing Zygalski to create perforated sheets, programmed to decode the order of rotors, and to calculate the daily cipher key. The same year, Rejewski invented an electromechanical device called Bomba Kryptologiczna that conducted analysis of 17,000 possible keys. In July of 1939, just before Germany invaded Poland, Polish cryptographers met with their French and British colleagues, acknowledging they were reading the messages from 1933 to 38, but the code was changed just monthly. They handed out all the documents and materials, including Zygalski sheets and Rejewski's bomba, to be used at Bletchley Park in England, which was the center of Allied code breaking. In March of 1940, first bomba machine designed by Alan Turing was installed, and then a month later, German messages were, were read within 24 hours. And a good thing, too, because after the fall of France in June of 1940, the Battle of Britain was about to begin. Code breaking was so complex that any shortcut was welcomed. John Harvell discovered the German operators who were supposed to spin the wheels every morning to randomize the positions, either by laziness or urgency failed to do so, thus sending the first three letters of secret code uncoded, human nature. 
Alas, in July of 1942, German introduced four-order machine, making code breaking impossible. British and newly involved Americans were working feverishly to break the new code. Germans' fate in the strand of the code was such that they changed the settings only once a month again. The American engineering team was led by Joseph Desch and Robert Muma from NCR in Dayton, Ohio. Desch designed the first electronic accumulator where for the first time, numbers were counted electronically using the vacuum tubes, which made the code breaking process significantly faster and more reliable. The delivery of the first of 121 bombs started in 1943 thanks to waves, hundreds of Navy officers, and enlisted men working 24-7. The combined effort made it possible to launch the uh, June 6th invasion of Normandy. The Enigma code-breaking story is astounding, but a parallel story of keeping that a secret is equally amazing. The Allies went to incredible lengths to make it so, including endangering their own military forces and even civilian population. They kept it secret till 1974 when the first story is about to appear. The Enigma code-breaking process was an incredibly difficult work done by thousands of code-breakers. They got some help, however, from our human personal failures, like greed, laziness, and hubris. Not to mention the German military command and its failure of imagination to imagine that an unbreakable code can be broken. Hope you enjoyed, thank you, hope you enjoyed the presentation. I would love for you to visit the Computer Museum either for the first time or as a returning visitor. And I would love to invite you exactly to the same theater in the nine days on September 22nd for our remarkable award ceremony where we celebrate in the trailblazers in deep exploration from seas to stars. And we'll be handing out the information during the intermission. Thank you so much.